This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. Welcome to our flower series. In this video, we're piping beautiful buttercream climbing roses. It's broken down into steps so you can skip ahead, rewind, and rewatch as desired. Let's start making colors. We're going to make three colors today. We're using all American style buttercream and three liquid gel colors. Neon bright pink. Oh, there it is. lemon yellow, and finally, some sunset orange. We're gonna be using small quantities, so I just have a nice drop squeezed out on the lid right over here. And I'm gonna start with my pink. The three colors we're making are gonna be a nice light pink, a peachy orange, and a nice soft yellow. So just a few nice sized specks there because we want a nice light pink. And we've based the colors for this flower that we're making, it's a nice climbing rose, and I was using one called a Sunset Memory as the inspiration for not only how the petals are, but also the colors. So it's a nice kind of almost gradient where it goes pink to orange to yellow, and the colors are all really soft. So I like where my pink is going. I'm just gonna make it a little darker. Just give it another little pop of color. Once we get a nice, soft, but present pink, I'll make myself a nice peachy orange. So nice, soft, subtle orange color. And I think that's gonna be a beautiful color for our petals. Next up is gonna be our orange. We're gonna use some specks of both orange Start with just a couple of those, and also a few of pink, but less. We want this to read as an orange, but have a nice soft peach tone to it. We don't want it to be too bright and take attention away from the pink that we made. And we want it to go with it. Just kind of work together. And that's looking beautiful. I'm just going to add a tiny touch more pink just to make sure it really reads as a nice peach color versus a more pure orange tone. And I like that. It's got a nice almost creamsicle vibe to it with just that little hint of pink. And I think it's gonna work really well with our other color. Our final color is gonna be our yellow. And I wanna just make a nice soft color with some lemon. Just a little bit, nice tiny specks. And just a super, super tiny speck, speck of that orange, just to kind of tie it in with my other colors. I wanna keep things nice and kind of light and soft. It's going to be a flower with a lot of petals and a lot of detail. So to a certain extent, it's going to kind of almost reflect and amplify that color just a little bit. And I think that's nice. It's like a nice, soft, golden, like a really light egg yolk color. It's almost the color when you whip eggs to a ribbon and it's got that nice, soft yellow to it. It's going to be beautiful with our two other colors. We are gonna use two bags for this project, both 12 inch decorating bags. The first one, here we go. I've got fitted with my number 122, there it is. You can see it's a nice, large, curved petal tip. I've striped the bag, so we have a small ribbon of orange down at the bottom fat end of the tip and a nice area of that pink on the top. My second bag I'm using with a coupler and we're going to use with both the number 61 tip and also a number four. You can see this bag is striped so we have half orange, half yellow in there. And when I have it using with the number 61 tip, I'm going to line it up so that the oranges on the back 
kind of uh, convex area of that tip. And the yellow is going to be lined up with the concave side, right? So dip in lines up with the yellow, bulging out lines up with the orange. You can see there. So that's going to give us orange on the back side of our little petals we're going to make with this and yellow in the center. When I'm using the four, it doesn't matter how the tip is on there. Let's go over the techniques we're going to use for our climbing rows. We're going to start with the petals. We're going to do a variety of different kinds of petals, and we're going to use a number 122 and a 61. For the first one, we're using our 122, and I'm calling it a little horseshoe petal because it kind of has a little lucky horseshoe shape to it. We're going to pipe a mound underneath it by holding the bag straight up and down and just giving it a little squeeze just to build up a little bit of buttercream and then we're going to pipe that horseshoe shape right on top of it so i'm going to line the back of the bag up underneath that and i'm going to have it kind of in my lay flat position back in towards three o'clock and we're just going to draw that horseshoe shape so it overlaps our mound and it's a little tricky to do on the tray but here we go. There we are. And we can even draw it a little bit further. This way it's overlapping that and it's giving us a nice kind of, um, sorry, convex shape to those petals and they're going to look like they're unfolding and have a little bit of a curve to them. Next, we're going to do some skinny petals with our 122. We're going to hold the bag straight up. We're going to point that tip opening kind of towards 12 o'clock and we're going to push out towards the edge of our nail and then pull back. So it's a very simple motion. Just think about sliding their bag out and pulling it back. So we're just going to line it up like this and we're going to push out and pull back and it's going to give us these skinny cupped petals. And finally, we're going to do some classic teardrop shapes. For this one, our bag is at 45 degrees and we're going to be at 430, so our right shoulder. And I'm going to try and do one on the tray, but it's a little harder because I can't rotate the tray like I would my nail for these. And I need that rotation to really do it. So we're going to be pulling out, rotating, and pulling back to create those teardrops on our nail. And we're actually going to do them as trios. So I have a little note down there. So it's going to be three, one large, and then we'll do a medium one and a small one. So we're actually going to do three sizes with the same tip. So they're going to kind of layer on top of each other to give us different sizes of petals. And these are the three main types of petals that you probably really want to practice before you start working on your nail. So our final kind of petal is going to be a curved spike. So if you've done anything like uh, chrysanthemums or anything like that, it's going to be very similar to that feel. We're going to have the bag at 45 degrees, back end is at 3 o'clock, and we're going to squeeze and let a little mound build up and then pull a spike. And what we're going to do is flick it over towards the center at the end. And these aren't going to stand up for me because I'm doing it on my tray without the support of the other petals. But basically what we're going to do is slide it along the petals that we've got going and then just do that little flick at the end. So the bottom portion of these is going to be supported by the other petals that we've already made. So it'll hold up on us when we actually go to do our flower instead of flopping over too much. But they're going to be really easy to do and they're going to be a great way to finish the centers of our flowers. So for our final little detail, we're just going to do some spikes for steam ends. And I've got my round tip, my number four, on my bag of my yellow and orange. And we're just going to squeeze a dot and then pull up while still squeezing. And when you combo those together and do a whole bunch, it's going to give you some nice little spiky stamens in the middle. Let's talk about how we're going to use the techniques we just went over to build our blossom for our climbing rows. The first thing we're going to do is kind of divide our area into fours and think of it a bit like four quadrants. And we're going to pipe four of those large horseshoes right at the edge of our nail. Um, and it's going to kind of take up most of the area in each of one of those quadrants. In between them, kind of on those access marks, we're going to put a narrow petal in between. And this is going to form that base layer of our flower. 
And we want a nice void in the middle too. We want some area in there so that as we start going, those petals will start to angle in and we'll have a nice area in the center where we can do our stamens. So we wanna make sure we're on the outside edge of a big flower nail. I'm using a nice three inch diameter one so I can create a really nice big blossom. When we go on to make the second layer, we're gonna pipe our petals in alternating or uh, in an alternating pattern. So I'm gonna start with my trios of teardrop shapes and I'm gonna start on top of one of those narrow ones. So the ones that are on this bottom layer are almost gonna disappear on us and really just act as a support, right? So it's gonna keep a nice even bottom for us. And they're easy to squeak in there because of their shape. So I'll do a trio and do a nice big one. Uh, do a medium off to the left and a small off to the right. You can always reverse that if you want to. And then I'll do some narrow ones right next to it. So kind of on the top, right there, almost centered on one of my horseshoe petals. And then do another trio, narrow, trio, narrow, trio, and narrow until I get all the way back to the center. Now, when we're getting towards closing in the center area, if I have room, if you still have a big space in there, you can pipe a few extra of those narrow petals right up the side, anywhere you think it needs one, just for a little extra volume, a little extra pretty detail. If you're running on low on space, I would skip that step. So we'll go ahead and do one and see if we can get some of those in there. And if we can't, we can just leave them out. I'm gonna go ahead and put a bunch of stamens in the center, so kind of fill up that area a little bit. And then I'm gonna surround that with those curved spikes. So I'll go right in there, kind of in between where my stamens and my petals are, and everything meets up, and I'll pull those curves, and I'm gonna pull them along the angle of the petals and just flick towards the center right there at the end. So it'll kind of enclose our stamens and meet up with all of our petals and join everything together. Now that we've talked about it, and especially since it was complicated, let's pull out our flower nail and give it a practice. So to get ready, I went ahead and drew an X on a large piece of a parchment square, basically just dividing that big square into four smaller squares. So you've got four little quadrants there, almost like a graph axis. That's gonna divide up that area and make it easier for us to visualize the spacing. I just flipped it over and glued it down with a little dot of buttercream to get myself ready to go. All right, let's get started piping. So you can see the outside of my flower nail is right there. I wanna just walk my bag in a tiny bit towards the center, pipe a nice little mound for myself to pipe over, and then set myself up. So we're flat three o'clock and we're gonna draw that nice little horseshoe. I've got the fat end touching and I'm gonna pull up nice and slow over that mound. Beautiful. So you can see how it kind of cups over and the end of those petals curl up for me. That's gorgeous. I'm going to go ahead and do one in each of these sections. It's a nice little mound. And pipe on top. And they don't have to be big, especially to begin with, if it's easier, do them a little smaller. It'll give you a little less drama with the shape of your petals, but it'll be a little easier to handle. There we go. So you can see, now we've got four of those on there. They look beautiful. We're gonna go ahead and put in four skinny petals. Next, we're gonna put in four of those skinny or narrow petals. So I'm gonna set myself up. Just the fat end of the tip is touching. You can see the skinny end is pointing towards noon, so kind of straight up there. And I'm almost in that kind of straight up and down position. And I'm just gonna pull one of those little petals. So you can see it gives me just a little bit of what I need to kind of fill in that area in between our little horseshoe petals. And it builds up a little base so that our next row has something to sit on. Beautiful. Now we're gonna do our teardrop 
trios. So think big, medium, small, however you want to go. Um, and then we're going to do narrow ones next to it. And we're going to go around in a, a clockwise motion, but do whatever is comfortable for you. I found that it's easier to do it alternating, do my teardrop trios, then my narrows, teardrop trios, narrows, then trying to go back and work the narrow ones in afterwards because everything's gonna be kind of close together. So I'm gonna start one of my teardrop trios just right on top of one of the narrow ones on that bottom row. And I wanna pull it nice and big. We wanna cover up area. So out, rotate, and pull back. Nice, big teardrop. And then I'm gonna do a smaller one and a tiny one. So smaller teardrop, tiny teardrop. You can see cute little trio of petals. And then right on top of the middle of the horseshoe, you can see we're right in line with that little void. I'm gonna push in, if possible, two of my skinny ones. So one longer, one shorter, beautiful. And I'm just gonna repeat, go around, do those teardrops nice and big, medium, small. Clean off your tip as needed in between. And if you run out of room, you can always do just one narrow. So if this is a lot to squeeze in for you, don't worry about it. You can always edit as needed and just skip a petal because it is a lot of petals. And you can see it very quickly takes up that area and we work ourselves all the way around to the beginning. But we've got a nice little void there in the middle. If you need to, if you have any areas where let's say it's a little lower or you think you need it, you can always put in a little short narrow petal. Anywhere you disturbed something or you've got a little bit of a void. Now we're gonna switch to our 61 tip and our four to finish off our center. We've got our bag of our yellow and orange combo ready to go. It has the number four tip on it and we're just gonna do some stamens really quick here in the middle. You can see there's not a huge area left. We've filled a lot of it up with petals. So I'm just gonna start right there in the middle and pull one up and just go all the way around it. We just wanna give something here in the middle. That way when we pull our 61s, they have support not only on the sides from the petals that are already there, but they have something in the middle to kind of support them as they flop over. I've changed the tip on my bag of orange and yellow to my 61, and you can see when I'm holding it at three o'clock and 45 degrees, it's that perfect angle to sandwich in between the petals and the stamens. And I'm just gonna slide it along that angle and curve towards the center. Gorgeous. And I just wanna kind of enclose these centers and give it just a little bit more of that orange color. It's kind of just peeking out and just present on those petals. And just kind of go ahead and enclose it. Do as many as you need to, to get a nice kind of tightly closed center. And you want those little, little petals just curving over those stamens to kind of enclose them. And there we have a beautiful climbing rose. That's all for this lesson. We hope you enjoyed piping climbing roses with us. If this one was a little too challenging for you, try checking out some of our other flower series videos. We've got some simple tutorials on some great things like basic roses. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.